Today for review we have the Honda Civic 1.8 injection petrol manual. Now this car has done about 62,000 miles and in the private ads it's worth somewhere between three and three and a half thousand pounds. But we're going to take a look and see what you get for your money. This is a real world review. Let's go and take a look. Available in the usual combinations of petrols, diesels, manual and autos, there are a merry dance of these available, so finding your perfect car should be relatively easy. The flagship sporty Type R is like Daddy Bear's porridge and just too hot for most, and the 1.4 Mommy Bear petrol is a bit lukewarm and unsatisfying. Here we have the Baby Bear 1.8 petrol for consideration, as it's just a little cheaper than the diesels and is just right in terms of affordability, economy and performance. The exterior of this car remains a pleasing piece of automotive design. Deceptively cute for a family sized hatchback, the futuristic demeanour has endured well and still looks easy on the eye 10 years on. The space race design cues such as the monolamp strikes front and back, hidden rear door catches and triangular exhaust pipes were a Cape Canaveral departure from previous Honda styling and definitely appealing to the younger family, possibly a significant reason for its sales success. There's something really pleasing about the way it's kind of hunkered in. There's a kind of poised stance, like a little kitten that's about to jump on top of a ball or jump off a wardrobe. And I kind of like that cute little kind of puppy um, look and feel to the shape. It's actually quite a big car, but the way they've designed it, it makes it look so much smaller on the curb. You'll notice when you try and park this thing, it is actually fairly large. Yeah, so the interior of this car moves really nicely around you, nice swoops and curves. Nice cow. He's a big boy. I mean, it's so beautiful here. It's so beautiful. And the thing you really notice about the interior of this car is loads of glass. You know, these pillars are quite thin, so you get a great view of the world around you. One thing though, and you'll see this later on, is the view in the rear view mirror out the back window is hampered by this stupid spoiler they put across the back, you know. I know in silhouette, it looks great, makes the car look nice, but it is impractical. So that's a bit of a markdown in my books. But generally, very pleasing place to be. The rear seats split 60-40 and fold flat, so the load area is larger and more flexible than one may expect. The opening is a little bit encumbered by the sculptured rear wings, but because the boot floor is relatively low, you will find loading most objects is a piece of cake. The 1.8 VTEC engine in this car is the all things to all people answer to performance and economy, due to some rather clever backstage trickery. Frugal at low speeds, yet eager to shine when you open the theatre's curtains, this advanced little unit also has an excellent reputation for reliability a major consideration for real worlders when parting with hard-earned money. Coupled to the six-speed manual gearbox, it's almost as docile or debonair as you could want. It's not as economical as a diesel, but much more refined than the understudy 1.4 petrol equivalent. So you've got electric heated mirrors, both sides. You've got four electric windows, front and back. You've got cruise control, you've got air conditioning, you've got dual zone air conditioning, which is handy. Let's say you've got a passenger who likes it a bit hotter than you, or cooler for instance, that's pretty handy. You've got the satellite navigation, you've got this interesting array of instrumentation here, giving you all sorts of information about your current miles per gallon, trip clocks, it's really good visual display, the rev counter, fuel gauge, etc. And just perched on top there in digital, you've got your actual speed. Going to the entertainment system, you've got a multi changer, six disc CD. All the controls are pretty intuitive, a series of dials and buttons. As I say, everything's well made. You've got nice little features like automatic headlamps, automatic washers. And it's a pretty comfortable place to be, to be honest. So the driving position is pretty good. On this EX model, you've got seat adjustment, so you can raise the height up, which is good for those with longer legs. 
My Tinder profile would suggest that I'm six foot three. I'm actually only six foot. It's quite comfortable in here. And when I'm behind the steering wheel, there's more than enough room behind for a passenger. So again now, getting about one and a half thousand, ten and a half thousand RPM in fifth gear. Doesn't really want to pull away too much from there. You need to change down gear quite a lot and you'll find yourself changing through the gears to get the best out of the engine. Obviously, if you try and accelerate in the wrong gear, it's quickly going to suck the juice up. But you should find about 450 miles to every full tank. So that's pretty reasonable, really, I think. The insurance group is 21, which is curiously better than the diesel, and the road tax currently would relieve you of just £190 per year. Parts are as common as cart and custard, and servicing is cheap if you avoid the main dealers. But the thing about these cars is they're just bulletproof. They go on and on, don't go wrong. You know, you're pretty much in safe hands. So if you're looking for a cheap car that will seat four or five people, it's got Isofix points in the back for the kids, then you could do a lot worse than consider one of these cars. And there are lots. You know, there's gonna be a plethora of choice, which means two things. You can get the exactly the spec that you want, and also sellers will be keen to sell you are going to be able to negotiate a good price. So all in all, good little buy, I think. OK, so it's not the most exciting car in the world and your neighbours certainly aren't going to think you've won the lottery. But it's a lovely car. And I think, to be honest, if you're in the market for a second-hand car, you're a family of four or five, two and a half grand, three and a half grand can get you one of these cars at 60,000 miles, 10 years old, plenty of space, in a really flexible load area, it just makes a lot of sense, ticks many boxes. So here at Real World Reviews, we've gone to the trouble of composing some pros and cons to help you decide for yourself what it is you want in your next car. Pros, reliability, is spacious for a hatchback and cheap to maintain. Cons, that rear spoiler ruining your rearward visibility. It's prone to suspension squeaks and creaks and can be a little thirsty if not driven with care. So, what else might you consider? Well, we've searched eBay, Autotrader and the local papers to find equivalent cars of the same age and mileage for your consideration. First of all, is a 2008 Ford Focus Titanium 1.6 with its high specification and a reputation for reliability. Second is a 2008 Vauxhall Astra 1.8i with its cool styling and a comfortable cabin. This has been a Real World Review. We hope you found it useful, so until we see you again, keep them peeled.